Hello and welcome to another episode of Tales from the Pot. Um, it's the 20th of January now, I think, and I'm going to give you a quick, quick mini tour of the uh, things that we made in the last um, couple of episodes. Um, you'll notice I've got this rather uh, undignified box here, which is where I've been stashing all of my my dice um, that need polishing and sanding and stuff. So. I've been keeping this kind of uh, out of the way, but I just realised it's completely in shot, but hey-ho, there we go. So, uh, in the last one, um, I was attempting to recreate this little dice that I had made in one of those really cheap, nasty moulds. Uh, this particular one, as you can see, has got a couple of really, really big, nice voids in it here. Um, and it's got glitter in it and a couple of different colours in here actually really like the colours in this dice and it's super sparkly here as well and wanted to recreate those so I got out my trusty old Werpy dice moulds and attempted to recreate them as you can see they're fairly similar in colour ish uh, that said uh, we don't have one side that's got just glitter on it now because um, I know how to not do that now and there is glitter in various places through here which you can sort of see a bit uh, the other thing that I really struggled with here is there's an awful lot of voids so you can kind of see this corner here there's a big void I have managed to repair it if I turn the dice that way you can see where it sticks out at the top um, all I have done with this I haven't sanded it or filed or anything I've literally just cut that down with a knife to Give me a surface so that I can actually uh, sand it and maybe maybe work on it. The uh, the D12 had uh, big old problems with the lid lifting up there as well. Not great. And, oh, don't even talk to me about this dice. This dice here, uh, you can probably tell that there's uh, issues with all of the corners. So there was a void here and then there's like, it's like splitting this side. And then here there's still a void. Um, I, yeah give up with this dice and with these molds uh, I know what the issue is um, we've been over this before these individual dice molds they don't give you enough space for the the air to get out and obviously I'm getting voids in virtually every single one I think it was just one dice that didn't have a void in that said I do really love the feel of these uh, molds they are internally well made and yeah they're just a bit disappointing so we'll still see if we can do something with these maybe i can uh, save part of the set um i kind of like what's going on inside some of these dice um but i might just have to put that project there to bed the other thing that we made uh that i knew that i was going to get a void in was this and um, you could see this from the top of the mold from this way uh, as you can see i've just started sanding this down this is the floral uh, dice that I made. All of the things floated to the top, which you kind of expect apart from there's like a pampas grass in the middle. I think it's called pampas grass. I'll have to check that. I'm pretty sure it's called pampas grass. Anyway, and these lovely kind of red, ready orange flowers there that are very out of focus. Um, there is some glitzy stuff in there just, you know, to give it a bit of depth. And I don't know what colour I'm going to ink this yet. Maybe like a like a really kind of dark orangey red. Similar to how the the red is kind of there. And this has come out pretty nice. I did have to top up the voids. Which you now can't see. Which I'm pleased about. The other one that I made then. Because I had a, a secondary mould without a hole. Without something in it. Is this one. This one is pink. Pale pink and pale blue. Mica powder swirled together. With. Uh, what else did I put in there? There's some glitter in there, I think, and there's clear resin. It's more like a two-tone kind of effect glitter. Some of that nail powder stuff I can see here. It's not picking it up on the camera, but I can see there's like a greeny colour, but then it's like pink as well at the same time in there. When we get some pictures of this in sunlight, it's going to look heaps better, but this one has... Uh, it's really pretty actually and I quite like how it's come out again not really sure what gonna ink it but there we go we have also got another hello bees set that I've been making 
these ones I think I have done no nope, nothing to it all either these are fairly raw out the mold again you can see the the bees pretty much all sank to one side even though the resin was fairly thick at that point the I think I needed to wait a bit longer except for this little crystal d4 because it's on the slant inside the mold so you've got a flower that end and a bee that end but that's fine because it actually looks like the bees are on the flowers which is kind of cool there's also some glitter in here a little bit of foil and a little bit of gold mica powder to give that kind of honey effect and i think they work quite nicely these need to be worked on this was my first set of hmm, petri dice we'll call them or petri ish in this case i know exactly how you're supposed to do petri dice so please don't give me any advice on that i've already checked into this what i did do though was wait for it to set and then faff with my colors because the colors i was going to use i suddenly didn't want to use anymore um i think that meant it took too long to set and subsequently we haven't got color dropped all the way through i think the best one here in this case is the d4 at six even <laughs> oh gosh it's been a long day um and ooh, possibly there we go we're throwing them around possibly the eight you can see the effect is working in there but the i mean it kind of worked in the four as well which too bright too bright can't really see and uh, the 20 it's virtually all on the number one face and there's not a lot of color at all that's spread through so but they make quite a nice set anyway um the the effect is there it's just not as much as i would have liked but that's fine i know what i did i know what i need to do next time and i'm just looking at these on the table you can't really see them properly the color coming through but these are these really nice deep purple i've trimmed these up nicely now and and these are gonna also be worked on that dark is an indigo and i really like the depth of it so we decided to play with that color a little bit so i'll show you what i did with these so this mold i've taken one of these out of this mold before but this mold is basically plant pots or succulent pots and when i bought this and wanted to make these little succulent pots or little pots for putting i don't know whatever else in and I wanted them to maybe be a little bit sort of marble-like. I've seen other pictures of uh, people that have made similar types of moulds. And I wanted to do a sort of a marbly thing. But the indigo I've put in in the end here. So hopefully you can see that. It's like bluey black just coming in there. And I wanted the base of the pot to be a little bit different. And then I'd kind of dunked a cocktail stick through so that it wasn't a, def a definite line and that it, it spread a little bit but not a huge amount i think that's come out pretty nice some succulents hopefully get to go in there this is quite a, a, a good mold to fill up there's a lot of resin that you need for this more than you'd think actually um and yeah i probably should measure put water in it and measure it to see how much resin i need uh, but actually i quite like the uh, the thrill of not knowing you know and getting to a point where I go oh I have leftovers what can I make with my leftovers so yes I probably should work it out but actually I don't want to and I'm fine with that so uh, traditional I suppose marble wouldn't be this see-through you can see it's quite it's quite see-through also you don't tend to get blue bluey colored marble it tends to be sort of black threads to it but this is a uh, mica powder in here with what would you call it i suppose i think it was just a white and i didn't mix too didn't mix it too thick so that it was a little bit see-through the interior of this one is a little bit paler um, than the other one i think because this was at the end of the at the end of the line and again here this one was probably the first one that i poured because you could see a darker patch in the bottom and then some lighter bits up here i did also put in some white ink I wasn't sure what the effect of it was going to be exactly as I was dropping it through. Um, and you can't really see it particularly. Maybe that's the ink in there. But in any case, or maybe that's it. I'm not sure. In any case, I dropped some in. And I think it's. I think they came out well. You know, I haven't really lost anything by putting the ink in. So, we have also got uh, two sets to demold here. 
but also these. Now, the little bees, um, they came in a pack and I had like loads of them and kind of felt like I should should include them in other things as well. So the little um, D20s with the hearts on the front, I put some in there. See there? So we've got glitter Easter, the nail powder stuff, and the little bumblebees in these as well. And they've come out quite nicely. I can still ink these up uh, with the, the heart is right in the middle there between those two. I think that'll still look fine. I used a uh, purple resin dye in these rather than alcohol ink and put some in here as well with some flakes as you can see to make these little key wings. These are a bit more summery than some of the other ones that I've made. Um, some of the other ones I've made are a bit more like, ah yes, D20 or natural one, you're going to die or something, I don't know. Um, but I wanted these to be a little bit more cute with the bumblebees in and some foil and stuff so I think I've achieved that and there's a few flakes of leftover bits Ooh, on the table and here as well and don't worry those will get scooped up and they'll get put in my pot and they'll get recycled into something new when we figure out what that's going to be so main event we have got goodness me what on earth did I do with these I cannot remember the life of me purple okay yeah I did purple I guess I had the purple out at the time there's quite a lot of flashing on here and I haven't got scissors in here. Well, I have, but the kitchen scissors. So I really don't really want to use those. The, uh... Oh, here we go. It's coming off. Right, so... Let's have a look at some of these. So these dice are predominantly purple, as you can tell. Um, with a bunch of these nail polish powder glitter things in. Not nail polish. Nail powders, I should say. In them as well you get like a bunch of different ones you get chrome ones and all the rest of it as well but I wanted to make some like really like actual proper purple dice Ooh. and throw them across the table obviously because why not uh, I think I've got some white in here too yeah I did so I think I did like a kind of petri effect here with the white which you can sort of see I didn't want to go like mad on the old petri stuff I wanted it to be just a little bit you know just a bit oh there we go so you can see the white on the top of here and there is some just just inside that six you can see around here i did do my usual thing where i pour clear resin into the bottom because i know the color will drop and you tend to get this like cool lines and stuff and then i've got glitter where i've put in some sides but not all of the sides as well so some sides are like mega shiny and some sides not so much so we've got this and the i use two colored nail powders in here one's a pinky green and then the other one was slightly bluey color so hopefully i mean the light doesn't the light's picking up flipping everything at the moment um there is it's kind of green and pink that i can see in there but yeah, hopefully you can sort of see. Oh yeah, you can kind of see that. It's very, very shiny on that side. There we go. These are quite cute. I like these. I don't think they're very manly. <laughs> I'm not sure if I was going for manly. Maybe I should have put more purple in if I was going for manly. Um, they're, they're quite glitzy. They're quite cool. I guess they, from what I found from inking, the ink tends to make dice look completely different, like the poop dice, for example. We made poop dice, and we inked them, and they don't look like poop dice anymore. And they have found a new home. Whether or not their new owner is aware of them or not yet, I can't say for sure. And I won't say too much until I know for sure, because she or he may not be aware just yet. So, we've got some nice, nice purple dice there. I'm pleased with the colour of those. Uh, this is a um a dye that's come from resin art supplies uk and guess what they sell yes you guessed it resin art supplies and um i was using just alcohol inks before but i had that awful trouble with my purple where it actually went orange um and made poop dice and other horrible illustrious things that we we won't discuss but this purple is is much nicer. It I've got a ready purple and a purple purple, and this 
this looks like a weird kind of mauvey purple when it comes out of the uh, out of the bottle and but it really does it, it, it comes into its own it would seem whilst it's in the in the pressure pot there and you get this nice rich purple so I'm really pleased with how those have come out this should be interesting because this has got red and purple in it and I think they might be a bit pink and purple then or maybe not let's check them out and see so these ones have got some foils in them uh, so I, I stuck some of the foil in to begin with before I started pouring I knew that it would stick to one side but also foil has a bit of a tendency to float up and it has a bit of a tendency also to pick up lots and lots of bubbles so I need to put some in first and then pour some resin in and then I kind of let it sit for a bit and then I pour a bit more resin in and a bit more flakes and stuff you know so that you're really getting them nice and soaked um, that's not necessarily the way you're supposed to do it I'm not sure there's an exact way you are supposed to do it that's the way I do it and that's working for me fine so I'm happy with how the uh, the ones are coming out that I'm putting foil in if I start getting massive voids in them obviously I would relook at that but for the most part um, I haven't had void problems in fact I tend not to have void issues in any of these other molds and when I make my own molds this is the type of style of mold I will be making this round type of mold I have some pipe coupling and some tape and all the bits and pieces that you need and I've done like heaps of research probably too much to the point of confusion I suppose um, and I found this really cool videos um, by Garage Quest and I've been watching Robinator as well so we are well up on all the videos I named but a few there are a bunch more that I've watched please do not send me <laughs> to watch any more videos on making molds or any more advice on making molds honestly I don't need it I, I've watched probably virtually everybody I can find on the internet I should be masterclass at this now um, but I'm still polishing up my dice masters um, and I really want to make sure I feel completely confident before I go ahead and make the um, the molds because silicon's actually not all that cheap especially if you're uh, pouring it into something where you're gonna hopefully make perfect dice from so and I'd like to be able to make perfect dice from first time so I really want to get it right first these dice are looking really nice this has got a, a ready purple in I don't know how if, if you can really see that there's just so much so much sparkle in here and they've got the purpley kind of color which is the same as this on one side and then like a red that I poured in first I think I'd probably put clear in these as well to begin with I seem to do that with most of them you can see that there's quite a big chunk of um, foil that side but that's fine I don't mind that I think it gives it character there is also a glitter powder within these they look kind of like I guess like jelly strawberry and black currant jelly I want to say this d4 is so cute there's some really cool effects going on in here so that purple is quite deep on one side and then you've got the glitter and then you've got the red and the bits of foil as well they work really nice and really pretty colors I'm really liking how those came out I really like this particular one this one's nice deep purpley red where the colors have mixed quite nicely and the good thing about this set is you get 2d20s and the other one has got more chromey flakes kind of one side and it looks it looks quite different they are they're from the same set you can tell they're the same set but they actually look they look quite different so I'm quite happy with how these have come out they look really cool the red is a nice tone of red in fact it looks a little bit orange in some lights but I'm fine with that it hasn't mixed in a weird way with the purple which I'm also pleased about so we've got <laughs> a fairly big tub to be cracking on with as well as these little guys up here I'm gonna get these cleaned up over the course of the next week-ish maybe two weeks uh, I have uh, one set of the Hello Bees dice I've already made and that's already spoken for so I need to get those sorted because I need to get them shipped off to their new home but we have uh, plenty more ideas I need to order some more resin and I need to designing my logo as well for my, my Etsy shop for when I open that up so that again that's uh, something I'm working on it's slow progress because I haven't just got on and dedicated time to doing it 
So the uh, the dice molds that I use, this one is from Crafting Game. They're on Etsy, and this one here, as you can see, um, with the additional um, D20 dice and the extra D4, which comes out of this side. This is from the Druid Dice Shop. They're also on Etsy. The Druid Dice Shop, they're based in the States and they do uh, zona papers and bits and pieces as well. So if you live in the States, you can definitely get those. It is somewhat cheaper if you live in the States. Uh, Craft and Game are a UK based supplier and the first dice molds I had from them weren't so great. But I use their chunk mold. It's a, it's a double one and I haven't had re any real issues with that. Just the first mold that I had, the D4 had some issues and the d20 had some sort of collapsing around the 19 13 and 15 faces but apart from that this new mold has been fine they just took rather a long time because of uh shipping delays and stuff i think to get their uh, their stuff for their molds this mold feels slightly different it's slightly squishier to this one so i'm guessing the types of stuff they use to make these two molds are slightly different um, just as this one feels completely different as well. This one's a lot thinner. Uh, it's obviously it's green and <laughs> That's not the only reason it feels different. It um, it's obviously made of a, a different material But um, I don't you know, I don't think it really matters provided that the silicon that you're using uh, Is appropriate for what you are using it for so if you're making dice if you're using UV resin if you're using standard resin, you know, if you're putting in a pressure pot, etc, etc, etc. So there's lots of different options out there. The only thing I would say is be careful when you're using resin. You need to use your PPE stuff. You need to be wearing gloves for sanding and polishing. And you need to be wearing your mask and stuff when you're using powders and stuff as well. And using a ventilated area. Get yourself a proper ventilator mask if you can. And uh, obviously, this is not for children. The number of people that I've seen go, oh yeah, my kids have got resin. And I'm like, oh my gosh really uh, it's not really a kids thing it's a chemical product <laughs> yes it does react yes it looks lots of fun um but you know either should be done with old slightly older children with lots of supervision and lots of ppe or leave it till the adults uh adults are definitely well not necessarily all adults but i would hope the majority of adults are a lot better equipped to deal with things like this so that's my little warnings for you all that said and done, I shall wish you a good evening. Thanks for watching. Feel free to tell your friends, like, if you enjoyed the content, subscribe. And we will see you in the next one. Bye bye.